All right, disclaimer. This is a personal YouTube channel. Any views or opinions represented in this YouTube channel are personal and solely belong to me as the owner and do not represent those people, organizations, or institutions that I or may not be associated with in professional or personal capacity unless explicitly stated. Any views or opinions are not intended to malign any religion, ethnic group, club, organization, company, or any individual. So this is the first category. Um, I hope you can see it in your um, in your end. So this is the first category. These are the category or the category A, which is the environmental critical projects. So first one is heavy industries. Everything that is a heavy industry project should or will really require an ACC. So first example is non-ferrous metal industries. Um, iron and steel mills, petroleum and petrochemical industries, and of course, smelting plants. Next um, example or next environmental critical project um, is the resource extractive industry. So when we say resource extractive, of course, it involves mining. So major mining and quarrying projects, uh, forestry projects, and fishery projects. The third example or the third project that is under the category A is the infrastructure projects. So, for example, major dams requires an ECC. Major power plants requires an ECC, of course. Major rec reclamation projects and major roads and bridges. Um, this is actually the update, updated list of environmental, environmental critical projects as of 2014. I actually searched as to 2011. Um, um, there are no additional uh, on the list. But during my time, um, when I was in college, Golf courses are actually not part of the environmental critical projects. It was not part of um, a project that would require an ECC. But later on, um, I think um, I think I found out about this when I was doing my PhD somewhere 2016. Um, that golf courses are already part of the category A or environmental critical projects. So these are the four major environmental critical projects that is under category A and will definitely require an ECC. The next category is category B, which is the environmental critical areas. So what are these areas? First area is areas declared by law as in national parks, watershed reserves, wildlife preserve, and sanctuaries. Um, there are actually cases what I'd say what leaders do. For example, um, I did not verify this and I, 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 I have not read any legal basis or any documents that would say that this is true or not. I'm not sure, but I just, um, I heard this before. Um, yeah, like there is an area in um, North Tacloban that was proposed to be converted into a sanitary landfill or a dump site, open dump site, I think. Um, and then that area is near a water system. I think it was near a falls or a river. Um, and then what our city mayor did is um, he applied, I think he applied for that area to be a to be considered as a watershed reserve. For, for that area, um, not to be converted in any way because you can actually do projects. Um, you can still do projects or you can build something or whatever in a national park or watershed reserves. However, you have to secure an ECC. Um, but if your project is located on these areas, definitely it will be hard for you to get an ECC. At the same time, we actually have an, a law when, when uh, if the area is considered as a natural national park, National Park or Watershed Reserves, um, um, you cannot actually do any, um, or you can do projects, but if it will, so if you will say like how huge is a project should be, um, 
I am not quite sure, but as far as I know, if it's a national park, it's a watershed reserves, you cannot do any major projects that would um, affect the ecosystem in one way or another. So basically, it's like saying you cannot do any projects um, in that specific areas, in that specific kind of areas. So the next um, environmental critical area are areas set aside as aesthetic, uh, aesthetic potential tourist spots. So if it's a tourist spot, definitely um, you have to secure an ECC. If you are going to put a hotel or any kind of structural structure in that specific area, you have to secure an ECC. Um, next is areas with constitute, constitute the habitat for an endangered or threatened species of indigenous Philippine wildlife, uh, both for flora and fauna. For example, um, are you familiar with um, the Lake Danau National Park? So it's a national park, and um, there has been a few studies on that national park that there are um, species of plants and animals, flora and flora, flora, flora and fauna, that are endemic to this specific area, in which uh, basically you cannot Basically, well, based on the EIS system, you can do a project, but you have to apply an ECC. Um, but again, it will be hard for you to um, it will be hard for you to to have a a huge project in in this kind of area. Um, it's the same thing with Mount Apo. As far as I know, there are only limited people who can hike and climb Mount Apo in a specific time. Um, because um, they want to protect the, the Mount Apo, of course, the ecosystem of Mount Apo, and they also have to make sure that the carrying capacity of Mount Apo in handling tourists and hikers um, that the Mount Apo can um, sustain. So at the same time, um, if you are going to have a huge project, a major project in Mount Apo, definitely you will be needing a an ECC uh, because there are there are a lot of studies already that there are still species of plants in Mount Apo that is unnamed yet or undiscovered. So, yeah, you have to, definitely, it will be part of the environmental critical areas. Next is areas of unique historic and archaeological, ge geological, or scientific interest. I would say a good example of this would be um, like, um, the Benham Rice, I'm not sure if you've heard about that, but Benham Rice is um, is located in uh, somewhere um, west Philippine. Uh, no, not west, but east. It's on the east of the Philippines. It's near the Pacific Ocean. And it is actually considered as the highest mountain under the ocean, as far as I know. Um, I hope I got it right because one of the uh, principal um, scientist of the specific project is actually one is actually my professor in UP, um, but anyhow, um, since it has a unique or it has a um, scientific interest, it belongs to the scientific interest, um, an area with a high um, scientific interest. So therefore, any project that will be done that will be done in the Benham Rice will definitely um, needs an ECC an ECC. So next is areas with traditionally occupied by cultural communities of tribes. So these are the areas that you can still find indigenous people that are living. So if you will be um, making a project that um, in these areas, then therefore you have to secure an ECC. Um, another is areas frequently visited and or hard hit by natural calamity. So for example, areas that are frequently visited by typhoons or areas that uh, falls in the National Philippine Fault Line. Um, yeah, any places that are frequently hit by natural, natural calamities, you have to secure an ECC. Next is areas with critical slopes. Um, if it's... Um, because, of course, we all know that, you know, if you are going to make a project in critical areas, in critical slopes, it you will be needing, um, well, you know, engineers, you engineers know about this. Um, you know, you have to secure your foundation and all other things that you have to secure. And definitely, um, there is a tendency that you will have um, 
an impact to the ecosystem or to the area itself it's if the the slope is um high enough enough so therefore you have to secure an ecc next is areas classified as prime agriculture lands i know you might think that um there are actually a lot of um people or private landowners that are converting their prime agricultural lands into a different kind of land use like most of them basically especially if it's near um, an urban area they are converting it into residential areas so definitely if you will be doing that therefore you need to secure an ACC next is recharge areas of aquifers um, there are a lot actually there are a lot of cases actually even in our city that swamps wetlands and other aquifers are being reclaimed and being um, converted into another kind of land use. And I'm not sure if they secured an ECC with that. But definitely, um, an ECC is needed to have or to do a kind of project in this kind of areas. Of course, water bodies, any kind of water bodies, may it be river, lake, and other kind of water bodies, if you are going to do a project on that, definitely you will have to secure an ECC. Next is mangrove areas. Though there are actually a lot of uh, mangrove areas that I've observed um, in our province that um, they are actually um, cutting these mangrove areas and converting it into um, a hotels or resort. Um, I'm not quite sure if they secure an ECC for that, but definitely if it's in a mangrove area, definitely you will have to secure an ECC. And of course, um, coral reefs. Um, as we all know, coral reefs are a um, very important ecosystem um, as a shelter for, as a habitat for our fishes and other marine organisms. Um, before in my college, the coral reefs are actually not, as far as I know, um, coral reefs and mangrove areas are not part of the environmental critical areas. Um, because I can remember when I was in college, um, I used to remember, I used to memorize all this environmental critical project and environmental critical areas uh, because my professor before um, would usually ask this during exams. So as far as I can remember, uh, mangrove areas and coral reefs are not part of the list. But uh, based on the updated list from EMB, um, year 2014, it is now part of um, the environmental critical areas. So how can we secure an ECC? As 